that says when you're a watchman, God will honor you. But when your voice is silent as a watchman, the guilt will come on you. And I also have a scripture where Yeshua made that same thing clear. Look, there's a funeral coming. Let me go to the funeral. You make your choice. You follow me. There's a divine appointment. Amen? Well, if it's not a funeral, it's a birthday. If it's not a birthday, it's an anniversary. If it's not an anniversary, it's whatever. Ruth said, listen, your people are my people. Where you are, I am. I really don't care what's going on in Moab anymore. That's the kind of radical commitment that gets you into the places God wants you to be. Let me say goodbye to my family. Some people have been spending 20 years saying goodbye to family. They haven't succeeded yet. Come on. I, I'm, I'm serious. Uh, Don and I have been pastors way too long. You're just not going to float it by us. Okay? The biggest trap to successful Christian living is your own family. Yeshua put it this way. A prophet has no honor, I mean has honor, except in his own family and among his own people. I've seen Christians build up positive, going for something. They go sit down with relatives, and now they're discouraged, and they're empty, and they got dumped on. If you could do that and maintain flying faith, that would be a different issue. I've seen people who got healed lose their healing by talking to relatives. I've seen it. They left the church service, they're well, they're feeling good, and three days later, all the sickness is back on me, Pastor. I say, who did you spend time with? Well, I went with my mom, and she said, I don't look good, and I... Yeah, and she talked you right back into where you were. Radical commitment. Come on, folks. That's what Ruth did. Radical commitment. Look at Matthew chapter 10. It gets even a little tougher. Matthew chapter 10. How can it get tougher, Pastor? These are the words of Yeshua. They're in red in my Bible. <laughs> Don't get upset with me. Matthew chapter 10. Wow, wow, wow. Verse 34. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Now, we've got a decision to make. Either Yeshua was a Torah observant Jew or he wasn't. I believe he was. And he knows the Bible as well as I do and you do that the Bible says to honor father and mother. But honoring father and mother never meant putting them first above the demands of God in your life. Said it right here. Said it right here. Look at Matthew chapter 19. Last one of these we're going to look at, the cost of discipleship. Matthew chapter 19. Verse 28. Actually, let's back up. Verse 27, Peter answered him, we have left everything to follow you. Oh, sounds like Peter was over in this area here. I've left everything to follow you. I left my fishing business. Uh, people think I'm radical and weird because I've become a Talmudin. People in, in, in Capernaum are talking about me. I left everything, Yeshua, to follow you. What will there then be for us? Yeshua said to him, I tell you the truth. At the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me, you who have followed me, will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel, and everyone, say everyone. everyone. Now at this point, I know I'm in there. I'm, I'm not part of the twelve, so I'm not going to be sitting on the twelve thrones, but I'm part of an everyone. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters, or father, or mother, or children, or fields, for my sake, will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. The Greek phrase there, will receive, is a present tense verb. We tend to read it future. But in the Greek, what it means is you will receive now. 
you will receive now. What he says, listen, if, you, if you've had to leave a house for the cause of Yeshua, well, what on earth does that mean to leave a house? God tells you to be a, a missionary. We talked with a, Donna and I and Jordan, with, and, and, and you were with us. We talked with a young couple in their 40s uh, in Jerusalem one night. We all got to meet with different Jewish families. And our couple had been in Israel four years, almost five, and um, had no children. They lived in uh, Michigan. And all along, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, had been uh, talking about making a aliyah to Israel. They didn't speak Hebrew. But they just, as they were growing in their faith, they didn't, weren't brought up that way, but as they grew deeper and deeper in their faith, they had a, uh, you know, a desire to go, go to Israel. And so we're chatting about what, you know, what, what is the difference, what's the challenges and, and everything. And he tells us a story. In, in, in the States, they had a three-story Victorian. They're now living in an apartment that's probably half the size of our first floor in our house. They had a car, now they're in Israel, they don't have a car. He was a, a, a teacher in a school, he said, I'd walk, everybody knew me. I'd walk around the school, everybody knew me. I walk here, nobody knows me. Gave up his name, gave up their house, gave up their car, get, to, to live where? To be where God puts them. But then they talk, you could just see it in their eyes, the joy, the, the sense of being there. You know, I, th I think of people who say about Randy and Heidi, you know, who they gave up their place in Townsend so they can be missionaries in Mozambique. What did they give up? Go ask them if they'd rather trade that for their house back in Townsend. See, the truth of the matter is, nobody gives up a house for God that they're not blessed. As Randy said, I've got a dozen houses that I can live in that I could never afford. You know, he's got houses open to him all over the place. You just walk in, and they're all open to him. Yeshua said, listen, everyone who's left houses or brothers, sisters or fathers or mothers or children or fields for my sake will receive a, a hundred times. Who would have ever, who of you would have ever thought you had a mom and a dad <laughs> like you have now? Hmm? Someone who will speak the truth to you, someone who will love you, someone will, who will... Discipline you if you need to be, but discipline with the hope of your increase, of your, of your prosperity. You see, in the biblical kingdom, in the biblical kingdom, there's got to be a leaving in order for there to be a gain. If you can't leave, you can't gain. How many children do I have now? <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I, people ask me, how many children do I have? I said, well, you know, it's interesting, I've got a lot of Haitian children. You have Haitian children? Yeah, 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 they call me Papa Blanc. I'm the white father, Papa Blanc. You're their white father? Yeah, yeah, that says we got eight of them. You got eight Haitian children? Yeah. And then nine here, and then I've got dozens here, and oh, 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 yeah. I thought you were talking about real children. I am. I am. I'm talking about real children. Hmm? Because that's what God said. Glory to God. Romans eleven seventeen. you know the verse that says, If you, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others, and you now share. You, the wild olive shoot from Moab, you've been plucked out of Moab, you're now put into the household of God. You were a wild olive shoot. You were a Gentile. You had no covenant with God. You were not part of God's God's family. But if you'll leave the Gentile pagan thinking and get grafted into the household, there's a place for you. Ephesians 2.19 says this, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but your fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's okia. You're no longer a foreigner, but now you're a fellow citizen of God's people and you're a member of God's okia. Remember when Yeshua said, there are other sheep I have that are not of this fold? I've got other sheep, but they're not of that fold. I must go and bring them in, into the fold. One of, the, uh, one of the families, I think, said to the people that were visiting them in Jerusalem, after describing who we are and what we do, they said, well, you're, you're, you're Jewish Christians. 
you're Jewish Christians. You know, it's like here they are walking around in the household of God's people, and there's rooms. Yeshua said there's all kinds of rooms, and they're walking around, and they had an experience they never thought they'd have. They walked into a room, and there were Jewish Christians in there. <laughs> you know, is, is there, there, you do what? You worship on Sabbath? Yeah, we worship on Sabbath. I mean, like Sabbath, Sabbath? Yeah, we worship on Sabbath. You really, I mean, like... Friday night, to, yeah, yeah, Friday night, to, you, you, I mean, you, you know, and it's like, and, 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 and they're walking around this house, and I can see them, we're not there anymore, they're still talking about us, I can guarantee you, and, and, and this week, they're going to meet someone in this room, and they're going to say, you'll never guess who's living in that room over there, <laughs> you'll never, they're part of the family, you know, and I mean, we were there the first night, and, and we got, we, I came down for dinner, and there's a whole group of Jewish people, this is Shabbat near the end, and we just arrived, and there's a whole group, we're waiting to eat supper, and this whole group of Orthodox Jews have gathered around, what's going on, and each one of us, I mean, there's three or four people around, Steve was in the middle of a group of people, wow, yeah, and we were the ZZs, I mean, they're all asking, and at the at the end of the night, they came to their end of Shabbat service, and we're all in a little meeting. We're over here. <laughs> we're over here having our little meeting, and they come over and said, would you like to join us for our closing ceremony? And then really what it was like is they're in their little thing, and they're in here, and they said, those people in that corner room, they're one of us. And they invited us into the courtyard to celebrate with them. Hallelujah. I have other sheep. i got to bring them in. But we got to be in here. We can't be here. If we don't make a break, then we don't enter in. Listen to this. He goes on in Ephesians 2, says this. You're members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, which Yeshua himself is the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together. The, the foundation stone that holds it all together is Yeshua. He holds it all together. The whole building is joined together and rises to become what? A holy temple for God, and in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives. Yes. A, a, a building, living stones that were built together. If we keep holding on to our individuality, we can't come together. You can't come together. And eventually, if, if, if you maintain your individuality, there's going to be a hole in the foundation. Either someone else fills it, or the hole remains there. But we can't be individuals only. We've got to be assembled. The contemporary Jewish Bible says of Ephesians 2, So then, you are no longer foreigners and strangers. On the contrary, you are fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's family. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Amplified Bible. Therefore you are no longer outsiders, exiles, migrants, aliens, excluded, excluded from the rights of citizens, but you are now share citizenship with the saints, God's own people, and you belong to God's own household. You belong to God's own household. I was in reserve duty as a little, little private up in uh, New York for summer camp. And uh, they were playing war games. And, and I, man, we were out there, and you know, the green group and the yellow group and all this. And, and I was asked to carry a message uh, from this tent to one of the other outposts somewhere. So I'm carrying this message. The message you might think might be a military message or something. It was telling them where the party was going to be that night. And so here I am working for the officers, and, and I go over and I find out where the other command tent is. And sir, you know, here's the message I was told to deliver. And I turn around and I go to head back to where I came from. And on my way back, I'm walking down this trail out in the middle of nowhere, and two GIs jump out with their guns. And they say something like, chicken. <laughs> and the minute they say that, I'm thinking, password. Nobody told me the password. Is it chicken little? Is it chicken fry? Is it, you know, chicken. And I said, you got to be kidding me. And they said, the password. I said, I don't know the password. Well, they don't know what to do. I'm from another unit, not even in that state, so they can't recognize any of my emblems or badges. So 
I said, I work in the general's tent. And they said, well, let's go check it out. So they marched me. So here I go. You know, I'm, I'm being marched back up there. And I come up, and there's the general's tent. And there's a general in the tent and a bunch of colonels. And, and so here's, and I just start to walk in there. And these other two guys, they're like sergeants. Are, you're, you're not just going to walk in there, are you? I said, I told you. That's where I work. They know me. And so they said, okay. And they left me at the gate, and they just let me walk in. And I think... Isn't that what the Bible says? We can boldly come into the presence of our Abba. Abba, I'm home. First thing I used to say, no matter how old I got when my parents were still alive in Florida, might be a whole year, I'd walk into, into their house in Sarasota, I'd throw open the front door and I'd say, Mom, I'm home. It was always my home. I'm always welcome there. Well, that's the way we are to be with Abba. We don't crawl our way into his presence. We're members of the household. I have a right to walk in and out of the door and find pasture. i am got a room in there. Now listen to this in the Message Bible in closing. That's plain enough, isn't it? You're no longer wandering exiles. This kingdom of faith is now your home country. You're no longer strangers or outsiders. You belong here with as much right to the name Christian as anyone. God is building a home. He's using us all, irrespective of how we got here in what he is building. He used the apostles and prophets for the foundation. Now he's using you, fitting you in brick by brick, stone by stone, with Jesus as the cornerstone that holds all the parts together. We see it taking shape day after day, a holy temple, built by God, all of us built into it, a temple in which God is quite at home. I can say that of you. We've all come here from a whole variety of places. Many of you were Catholics, some of us were Methodists, some were Congregationalists, some of you were whatever, some of you were nothings, <laughs> religiously speaking. Amen? We, we came through many avenues. We don't have a, a common background that brought us together. What we have is a common Lord. And we have a common sense of belonging, that he's doing something unique. We don't expect every other church to look like us. God forbid, each church has to have its part. But we're part of something he's doing that's impacting not just our lives, but the impact of this congregation is impacting even lives of people in Israel in amazing ways. Wherever we went in Israel, people kept asking me, are there many of you? <laughs> Not meaning the size of this congregation particularly, are there many other churches like you? Are there other Christians like you who love Torah, who love God's word, who love God's people? Are there others of you 